Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today we are doing Hero Masteries. We're going to be focusing on tier 13 and tier 14 and we're also going to take a peek at tier 15 and 16. Uh, so this is a Patreon Appreciation Week. Um, we have a uh, request from Devin Jago to go over and kind of re redo or uh, get our thoughts now on which uh, tier 13 and 14 Hero Masteries to really focus for. So Uh, if you guys are curious about the tier 13, tier 14 research, the biggest thing is when you complete the tier 14, you're going to get a bunch of extra stat points. When you complete the uh, tier 13 for a hero type, there's going to be a very significant bonus. So if we go take a look at the bonuses and you'll, you'll get to see exactly what my hero research is. For tier 13, when you complete this for the mages, it will give a shield to the mage and necromancer at the start of the battle that increases the damage uh, by 20% until the shield uh, fails. Uh, so it scales with their mana and their, their health. Uh, obviously, I don't have that one done, uh, but we can also see from the tier 13, just from leveling it up, it will increase the accuracy of the mage and necromancers. For the uh, rogues and uh, mechanics, We have, uh, let's see here, so for the tier 13, it offers, uh, gives the attacks of uh, the rogues and mechanics a 14% chance to stun the target for one second. So the percent chance for that stun goes up as you level it. Uh, and for tier 13, when you do finish this, it increases the accuracy of rogues and mechanics by 30%, their critical hit chance by 10%, and their critical hit damage by 20%. This one is pre pretty big. For the next one, we have the General Sage, and uh, <laughs> as you guys can see, we do have this one maxed out. So as you level this up, it increases the accuracy of friendly units near the General and Sage uh, heroes by 21%. Uh, once you do get this to tier 13, uh, what, what happens is the General and Sage heroes uh, buff a friendly troop unit at the start of battle, increasing their attack by 10% and health by 30%. Buff cannot stack. And the way that this works is each hero, each individual uh, general or sage buffs one unit. So if you have nine units out there and you have nine generals and sages, then all of them will get buffed. It is it's pretty, 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 pretty good. Uh, and finally, we have uh, the Gladiator and Paladin. So for tier 13 for them, uh, leveling it up, it reduces physical damage taken by the Gladiator and Paladin heroes. And finally, for the uh, tier 13, when you do fully unlock it, it increases the attack of Gladiator and Paladin heroes by 30% when their health is, is above 50% and increases their evade by 30% when their health is below 50%. So this is re really, really good because... Um, For Rufio, for example, this uh, as long as he has uh, plenty of health, his uh, deep impact, his Leo's Pride, all that type of stuff is going to do a lot more damage for things like uh, your Bane, your Belrog, uh, your, your tanky stuff. Even your, your Rufio is going to make them more tanky when their health drops low. So which one would I do first? Uh, honestly, if I had to pick, uh, and as you guys saw, um, I chose to go with the General Sage first for the uh, Tier 13. So the reason why I went with the General Sage, and I did not notice this at first, but as you level it up, it increases the accuracy of friendly units. Uh, I think that's absolutely huge and, and massive. Um, but also the Tier 13, so... I think this is pretty significant where, uh, again, with the example, if you have nine, t nine troops out there and you put out nine generals and sages, uh, all of a sudden all of your troops, including your dragon, your dragon can also get this, gain 10% more attack and 30% more health. Uh, that is significant. So anytime that you can overall buff up your army, I really like that type of stuff. So if I had to do this over, I would go with the General Sage uh, up to tier 13 first. That, that would be my priority just because no matter what race you are, no matter what the hero meta is, say next week the Wave Prism for Rufio gets nerfed, no matter what you're going to be deploying troops. And, and I think that uh, buffing your troops, especially with 30%, 30 more health is huge. When I finished this hero mastery, I noticed that uh, my, my swordsman, I was playing human at the time, 
I noticed that my swordsman uh, got more tanky. It, it, it was noticeable. It wasn't anything like over the top uh, because you guys can see just from like that troop equipment, that 30% more health. Uh, it, it's a lot, but it's also not a lot at the same time. It's not just like they have a million health. They don't go to 1.3 million health. It's a 30% increase based off of whatever those values are. So it's not really going to be a full 30% increase from whatever value is shown on the screen. It's going to be less than that, but it's still something. It, it still really, really helps with, with the tankiness. As far as the second one to do, I would absolutely uh, re recommend uh, doing the uh, Paladin and uh, Gladiator one second. So for the uh, tier 13 Gladiator and Paladin, highly, highly recommend getting this one. Once you get this one done, uh, the third one I would do would be the uh, it, it would be the rogue and uh, mechanic one because I, I think that the tier 13 here will also just increase their crit and, and get more damage. And the last one that I, I would do is the mage and necromancer. However, please keep in mind, I don't really deploy too many mages and necromancers outside of Ophidia. If you're a player that really enjoys Avril or say you, you'd like to put a uh, Valari out there at every fight, um, then may, maybe this is what you prioritize. So. Please keep in mind, this is what, what, what I would choose for my type of play style. Your play style might be totally different, so uh, customize it to, to whatever you see fit. Now, as we went through everything, you guys probably noticed that our tier 14s are not maxed out on any. So when you do finish your tier 14, it increases the might, stamina, and command of all of those types of heroes by three. That is a pretty significant stat boost overall. Uh, however, it, it, it's a lot, and I think that the tier 13s are, are stronger than the, the tier 14s for these stats. Um, I think that the Sage in general one absolutely is better off than, than uh, focusing on the tier 14. I think that the Gladiator and Paladin is absolutely more important than finishing off the tier 14. And I also think that the uh, Rogue and Mechanic one is more important than finishing off the tier 14 of those said types. For the uh, Major Necromancer, I would do the tier 14 for them before doing the tier 13, but that's just me. Again, it's a play style preference. Now, what I can say about the tier 14s is they typically offer, just by leveling them up, they, they offer uh, pre pretty good buffs. So I'm not saying skip them all together and don't put any points in. Uh, put in a, a decent amount. So the, for our General and Sage, they are at uh, level 23, which means that... Uh, there is reduced damage given to friendly units near the uh, General and Sage Heroes by 6%. If we go and we look at the uh, Gladiator and Paladin tier 14, we can see that it's at level 25, uh, which uh, allows them to do some like uh, siphoning of health and pretty, pretty much some, some life leads. So they're definitely worth getting 20, 30, even 40 points in. I just wouldn't uh, necessarily spend the time maxing them out until I got all three tier 13s uh, fully maxed out. Now... Moving on to the tier uh, 15s and 16s. So for the tiers 15 and 16, just like uh, with the tier 14s, even if you're not going to max them out, they're worth getting 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 points in them just because of the, the bonus. So for example, our tier uh, tier 15 has uh, it's level 25 and it increases the health of Gladiator and Paladin heroes by 8%. So I mean, that that's like, what, a, a couple days worth of research and now we have 8% more health for all of our Gladiators and Paladins. That is worth it, uh, to, to me at least. So. As far as which tier 15 to focus on first, because the, you'll unlock tier 15 before you get to tier 16, uh, just because of how the building's here. So unless you're doing crazy rush type of stuff, you're actually going to be able to max out one tier 15 before you even begin starting on the tier 16s. So that being said, you kind of have to decide which tier 15 you want to do. And keep in mind, the tier 15s are going to take uh, at least uh, a month, if not two months longer than the tiers 13 and 14. They scale up ridiculously because it goes up to level 80. So you have two different options in, in my uh, hum humble opinion. You can do uh, the Gladiator and Paladin, which when you do fully get this max out for the first 30 se seconds of the battle, when a Paladin and Gladiator hero takes damage, there's a 35% chance that they will be healed. This can tr trigger uh, twice per second, or 1.0.5 seconds. I think that's super huge for their survivability. Uh, the other one that, that you can go for is going to be for the General Sage. 
Uh, and this one, when you do finish it off, the first time that a friendly non-hero unit uh, nearby a general or sage hero falls below 60% health, for 5 seconds they cannot be uh, affected by crowd control, their attack speed is increased by 30% and their damage uh, taken is reduced by 20%. So pr pretty much uh, as the units are dying, they're going to do more damage and be slightly harder to kill, and they also won't be affected by crowd control, which is a pretty significant thing. So. Uh, for for me personally, and each time you level it, up, it level it up, it increases the health of a general sage hero, which this really doesn't matter. It's all about that that final unlocking point. So for me personally, um, same philosophy as the tier thirteen uh, I took with the general sage. It does not matter what race I play. It does not matter what the hero meta looks like. It, it, my prisms have uh, very little to do with this. And because of that, I, did, I opted to go for the General Sage first because I think that is more versatile. Now, that being said, uh, there, there is another option. The other option is the uh, Mechanics and, and Rogues. Uh, if you wanted to go that route, uh, I think this is super strong because when a Rogue and Mechanic uh, hero lands a critical hit with their basic attack, their attack speed is increased by 50% for one second. I think that this is pre pretty pretty big. Uh, however, that that being said, I think that the general sage uh, for myself and the playstyle that I'm in, uh, I think the general sage is a much safer pick and is more versatile. It, it it can benefit you no matter what position you're in, what part of the game, and anything like that. So. That is what I would do for the tier 15. Now, as I said, you're pretty much going to um, finish up one tier 15 uh, by, by the time that you unlock the tier 16. Uh, because as you can see, we're at uh, level 76 out of 80. If we, if we look at 77 to 78, that's eight days. If we look at our castle level, uh, we still need 400 hours. Uh, so that is what, uh, I mean, uh, 18 days so we'll, we're actually going to go over while we're level 49 while we can work on the tier 16s we're still going to be finishing up that one tier 15. I think from from there uh, again you have two different options when, when it comes to the tier 16s um, and for the tier 16s the, these ones are massive these are probably the biggest hero researches out there because it increases the level li limit of the heroes by five five that's massive. So when you're castle level 50, instead of having level 65 heroes, you can have castle uh, or you can have level 70 heroes. This is just massive, no matter how you cut it. So I think that the two options for this is going to be your uh, damage dealing stuff. Uh, now your damage dealing stuff, like like going for the tier 16 for uh, your mage necromancers is, is very good if you're using them. However, uh, the vast majority of people, I, I would not worry about focusing on this. In general sage, why does your Avalon need more health and attack? Like your Avalon is just there to do something. Uh, same thing with your Yip and everything else. So I think general sage can be skipped uh, as well. So now you're you're caught in the crossroads. Do you go for the Gladiator and Paladin? And remember, increasing the levels is going to be massive when it comes to the damage. So if you go with the Gladiator Paladin, your Rufio with the Wave Prism is going to do insane damage. Uh, your Gladiators and Paladins will be able to tank a lot more because five levels worth of health is a, a lot of health. The other option is the Mechanic and Rogue. Uh, so this will pretty much mean that your Jax and Nora are going to do a lot more damage if that's what, what you pick for this. Uh, maybe even Mako makes, makes a slight comeback. It, it's all kind of up to you and what, what, you, what direction you want to go. I think for me personally, I'm going to go for the, the Gladiator and Paladin, uh, but that's just me once that is available. So hopefully this helped you guys out when it comes to uh, which tier 13s to focus on first. Uh, pretty much skip tier 14. Uh, tier 15, I would highly recommend uh, General Sage, although I can see the arguments for the Gladiator and pa Paladin. And when it comes to the tier 16 for more, uh, more levels, it's up to you if you want Mechanic Rogue or Gladiator Paladin. So I hope you guys got, got something out of this and please keep in mind that even though you might not be maxing out uh, a, a research, it's still worthwhile to get some points into it just so you can get those base uh, bonuses. So with that, please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, go check out the description for all that cool stuff and I will see you guys soon. Thank you very much and thank you to the pa Patreons out there.